Hi friends, thanks so much for joining me again. It's the holy grail of photo editing, having a preset that you can apply to every single one of your photographs and have them improved because of that preset. You may have noticed that there's certain things that you do to nearly every one of your photographs that you bring in for editing, and that's kind of your recipe that you use. And if that's the case, why not build that into a preset? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the things that we can build into a preset that can be applied globally to every single photograph, and those things that we should exclude that are more unique to individuals individual photographs. If you follow along with me in this video tutorial, it's my goal that by the end you'll have your very own photo preset that you can apply to any of your photographs to improve them. I used to shoot a lot of weddings and I would come back with over a thousand photographs from every single wedding I shot. Getting those photographs edited, looking good and back to the client was just an absolute black hole of time. So anything I could do to speed up my workflow, I was all in. I used to do all my editing in Lightroom, but I wish that Luminar had been around then because it's the AI tools that are built into Luminar that are the key to creating a really good preset that can work universally on your photos. So what we're gonna do is actually build a preset that can leverage those AI tools and actually analyze each photo individually and enhance it. That way, when you come back with a batch of photos from an event of whatever type, you can apply that preset and it's gonna go through and enhance all of those photos just with one application of that preset. Sure, some photographs you might want to take a little further and you may want to do some more localized changes to those specific photos, but if you can get 90, 95% of the way there just with one preset, I think you're onto a winner. So here's the setup for you. My friends and I went down to a rock climbing club with our kids. My friend, he's not really a photographer, but he does enjoy it. So I took for him my little D750 with the 50 millimeter lens and just said, here you go mate, have a go with these. So he's shooting away, he's got a load of photos of uh, his kids, my kids, climbing the rocks, um, and he wants to see those photos, uh, but I'm in the possession of the photos, they're all raw files, and I wanna get them back to him. So I don't really wanna be spending a whole heap of my time processing his photos. So we're gonna build that preset that I spoke about, apply it to his photos, hopefully they'll all be looking pretty good by the end of it, and we can just export them as smaller JPEG files that I can then just share with him through maybe a Dropbox folder, something like that. So let's open up Luminar and see what we can do with his photos. So let's open up a photo of my daughter scaling the wall. First thing we'll do is come to the edit module here and we can come into this canvas section and one of the most important things you can do is just click all of these boxes which is auto distortion corrections. Um, so if your lens has any distortion, barrel, pin cushioning, um, you know, where it just looks kind of bulbous in any way, that will correct that. We're actually looking at a 50 millimeter lens. It doesn't zoom, um, so it's pretty much perfect. Uh, so there is, isn't any correction there, but if you do have any other lens, I recommend just tick that box, remove the chromatic aberrations, which is the uh, color fringings, the sort of magenta or cyan you get around the edges of objects sometimes if your lens is diffracting the light slightly and defringing will also help get rid of that. So just click all of those and we can move on. Where we're going to make most of our adjustments will be here within the essentials tab. So let's just have a little look here. Let's drop down light and we're gonna leave the white balance alone and leave it as shot. Nowadays, most of the cameras out there are really good at detecting what the appropriate white balance should be, so we're just gonna leave that alone. The exposure, we don't want to change that because your exposure may be up or down on any individual photo, so we'll leave that alone. Smart contrast is something that we can apply because it's smart and it's adaptive. And so if we take that away, you can see the photo looks pretty flat at the moment. So I think introducing a bit of smart contrast is a really good idea. And probably the most powerful tool we have at our disposal within Luminar is this AI Enhance. If we drag the AI accent up, it's gonna make several changes to the image all at once. If I turn this off, and then back on, you'll see that it's done a lot of things. It's done overall contrast, it's done localized contrast. 
it's increased the saturation and it's also taken a look at exposure and if it felt it needed to change it, it will have done. Uh, it hasn't made much of a change on this particular image because it's a pretty okay exposure as it is. Um, but personally, I find that if you put this at 100, it's a little bit too aggressive for my taste. So I'm gonna dial this back down to something like 50. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll go 60, we'll go 60 on this, why not? Live dangerously. Now I've used that tool to get this in a much better place. I just want to jump back into the light section and what you can do is actually just bring down the highlights ever so slightly so that if you do have a photograph that's um, particularly bright, things are starting to overexpose, th this adjustment will sort of take care of that. The shadows also is not a bad thing just to boost them up just a little bit. If you're shooting something that does have a lot of shadows, um, just increasing the detail in those uh, is, is a good thing to do. Here it's not making too much of a difference to this particular image, but I would recommend doing that. And one other thing that you can see here on the histogram, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with how these work, but basically it's just showing you distribution from your dark pixels in your image through to your whites in your image and everything in between. And the higher the curve is, the more of that particular tone or color that's in the image. So we haven't got many blacks and we haven't really got any whites here either. So if we come to the advanced settings, and you'll find that that happens a lot when you're dealing with photos straight from camera. Uh, so what we can do is just bring those whites up ever so slightly. If I push it all the way to the right, you'll see the histogram start to change and push much, much higher. As with so many of these tools, going all the way to 100 is just a little bit overkill. And you also don't want to go too far uh, when you're creating a preset that you want to work universally with all of your photos. So I'd say maybe 20 is a good starting point. And maybe if we drop the blacks down to minus 10. If at any point you want to see how you're headed with your preset, what you can do is just click this I. And so this is our before. It's quite flat, desaturated. We'll let go and pop, we got a lot more uh, contrast, a lot more color, um, and the exposure is a little better too. You'll notice that I'm working on a white background. I quite like a white background because it just shows you uh, the offset against the brightest of bright pixels. Uh, the usual setup for Luminar, I believe is dark gray, perhaps just normal gray, but um, you can get fooled pretty easy into thinking you've got a pure white when in actual fact you haven't. Like if you were looking at maybe these, at this rock here, the white bit there or this bit here, you might think that is a pure white. But if you switch your background to pure white, you'll see that you are still in a gray. So maybe we'll just take those whites just a little higher. But like I say, you don't want to push it too far because you don't want to come into a, a a white photograph, a bright photograph, and just blow those whites out. You want this preset to be working, as I say, universally, just making an overall improvement. Hey guys, I'm all about photo editing and helping you guys improve. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the video, that means the world to me, cheers. So the next thing that we might look at is the AI structure. Now, this is going to add a very crunchy kind of look. If I push it all the way to 100, you see exactly what it does. Uh, it really brings out all of the details, but it's a very strong effect. Some photos, this might look great all the way at 100, but for most photos, it probably won't. But it's your decision when you're making this universal preset for yourself. Do you like the effect? And if you do, so this is the effect, this is without it, maybe you just want to tickle in a little bit of it. It's basically you're creating your own recipe and you can copy exactly what I'm doing here. But what I'd recommend you do is use this as a starting point and then just find what you like for your photos. From here, we can take a look at color. Now we can increase the saturation and vibrance, but bear in mind what we did when we increased the AI enhance that actually increased saturation as well. Uh, not a huge amount, but it did. So we don't want to take the saturation too far, but let's have a look at color. And if you have a th think, when you bring something in from your camera as a raw file, and I do recommend shooting raw rather than JPEG, because JPEG will already pre-process your photos. Um, you may not realize it's doing it, but your camera is actually adding 
its own contrast, saturation, sharpening, all of that stuff, and you don't have the control over it. So I'd recommend shooting raw, bring it in, and then, uh, yeah, the raw files are normally slightly desaturated. So I would actually boost saturation just a little bit through this panel here. And we can see with our before and after, it's very subtle, but we have just increased that saturation. Again, we can use our eye tool here to see how we're headed. And we've got a much more punchy image here. And I, I quite like the way this is headed. We obviously don't want to do anything with the advanced settings because this is specific to colors. And each photo is going to be different with its color biases. Um, but if you want to make specific changes, this is something that you can come in and do. But for your generic preset, leave this well enough alone. Black and white conversion. Obviously, we're not dealing with black and white. We just want a good representation of the color image. Hey guys, I'm all about photo editing and helping you guys improve. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up for the video. That means the world to me. Cheers. We've captured. We'll move on here to details enhancer. How much sharpening you add to your image is entirely up to you. So my friend shot this uh, with my 50 millimeter lens. And you can see that when you shoot at 1.4 on a 50 millimeter lens, uh, not much is in focus. He probably <laughs> possibly missed his focus anyway. Uh, but what we can do is actually increase the sharpening and just see what it's doing. Okay, so if we go to 100, you can see our hair becomes much more defined there. Um, but as you increase sharpness, sometimes that introduces other artifacts, uh, a little bit of noise. So what we could do is maybe not be so quite so heavy handed with the sharpening. Let's go somewhere around that sort of 64 mark, happy with that. And let's look at denoise that will take away some of that speckling that we were getting, that digital noise that we'd introduced through the sharpening. And the other thing you can increase is the color denoise as well. And then if you're just getting any random coloration through pixels, that just takes care of that as well. But you really don't want to push those too high. If I put luminosity denoise all the way to 100, the effect we actually get is, is a kind of almost painterly look to the image. And that's just taking things too far. So I probably wouldn't go too much beyond 20, to be honest. If you feel that you do want to add more contrast uh, to the actual details in the image, what you can do is actually come to the details enhancer and you can play with these sliders. Um, so if I push small details all the way to 100, you can see exactly what that's doing. And you might be like, well, that looks pretty ugly pushing that all the way, but maybe I just want a little bit of that. You know, you might just want to push all of these just slightly higher. And if we turn that off, and on, you can see that it's just sharpening the image up nicely. And hopefully it's not over the top. It's just enough to add a bit of sharpening and improve things. So this is our before and that's our after. The next tool is the vignette tool. And I personally like to introduce a little bit of vignetting to my photos. So if I bring this down and just show you what I'm talking about, it's just a darkening of the edges. So if I put that all the way to minus 100, Far too much, I know that, but that's okay for now because by setting it all the way to minus 100, we can then adapt the sliders and actually see much better what they're doing. If you've only got that at, say, minus 27 and you start making changes to these sliders, it's really hard to actually assess what's going on. So let's go minus 100, be heavy handed with it for now. And what we're going to do is just bring the size down slightly. Um, I really want to increase the feathering and that's just the softness of the transition. I also like the idea of brightening the uh, inner part of it. So just increasing this inner light just ever so slightly. And we can also play with the roundness. If you take that to the left, uh, the feathering sticks very closely to the edge of the frame. If you take it to the right, you get a very circular um, vignette. But I kind of like somewhere in between the circle and the center point. So let's go somewhere around that sort of 34 mark. I'm happy with that in terms of how the vignette looks, but it's too strong. So now we can fade it back. So if I go to um, sort of that zero mark by double clicking, I can now ease that into where I feel it's subtle. It's there, but it's not in your face. So if I turn it off and on, you can actually see we're brightening the center whilst darkening the edge. I might even just take that just a little bit further. But I want that to work universally on all my photos, so I don't want to be too heavy handed. So let's see where we've come from. This was our before, this is our after, 
and we can do the slider before and after which I really love too and I think we've made a really nice enhancement to this particular photo I'm pretty confident that we're going to get a really good um, effect if we were to apply this to any photograph but we'll get to test that shortly for now let's press on and see if there's anything within the creative tab that we can apply Obviously we don't want to do anything with sky replacement or augmented sky, uh, sun rays, because these are all kind of things that are specific to a particular photo. You may have a landscape that has the sun in it, sun rays, great, but you can't build that into a universal generic preset, so leave that alone. Things like dramatic as well, it's a very specific look. If I push that to the right, you'll see that's uh, it's quite a strong distinctive look. And if you're making a generic preset, I would recommend kind of just leaving tools like this alone and leave them out of it. And then if you want to put them in afterwards, you can do in a more stylized preset. But for a generic preset, yeah, don't, don't put that in. But for argument's sake, let's say you really like dramatic. And what we'll do is we'll just put it in at something like five or six and say, yeah, okay, we're getting a tiny, tiny bit of that look, but not enough that it's going to make people think, oh, that's a bit weird. Why is that looking like that? Um, the same might go for matte look. I prefer to keep these separated into a more stylized preset, because if I push that to 100, it's creating a much more matte photo, almost like the original Instagram filter, um, that kind of look, which might be great for what you're after, but do you want that applied to every single photo you take, a landscape, a portrait? Um, I would say probably not. So that sort of stuff, I would say just leave that out. I'm a big fan of mystical, um, and I often use that in my presets and when I'm editing photos. Uh, it just gives this sort of like dreamy look, uh, nice ethereal glow. That's it at 100%, that's it off. I might actually build that into my preset just because it's a look that I actually enjoy, I like it. Um, so I'm just going to leave that at seven and say, yep, I'm happy building that in. Now, if there is one particular creative tool that you could consider adding, I would say it's your color styles, your lookup tables. So this is your color toning in here. So you've got access to all of these different color looks and they often look really cool. I, I really like these. Because we're building a generic look, you need to just ask yourself, do I want to apply this look to every single one of my photos on import? Of course, you can take this away afterwards, but that's not what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to achieve something that's generic. So. Personally, unless you are absolutely in love with a look and say, this is gonna define my style, I want every shot to have this 1990 look, for example, or I quite like uh, Long Beach. Long Beach is one of my favorites. Um, if I put that all the way to 100, you can see the effect it's doing. That's too strong. I would never use any of these anywhere near 100. I like the uh, default of 30, that's quite nice. But let's say you want to just sort of tickle that in for a little bit of color toning. We could have that at 17, turn that off, turn that on. That's quite nice. And we can say we are done with that because we don't want to add any portrait specific adjustments into a generic um, preset. Uh, and in the professional tab, and in the professional tab, again, we've got things that might be really powerful and useful for specific photos, but not generally. You may like the idea of adding a split toning, which allows you to introduce a color to your highlights and a color to your shadows. Um, if you did want to do that, I'd recommend going for a warm hue in the highlights, like an orange, and in the shadows, you can add a cool tone. And if we turn that off, and on you can see we've added some toning there but again you probably don't want that applied to every single one of your photos so let's turn that off and now say that we are happy with this as our edit so let's look at our before and our after and we've got a much uh, richer photo here I feel I feel this original is pretty flat and the changes we've made have really given it some pop so once you've created this, this can become an absolute time saver for you. What you need to do is just save this as a new look and then you can apply it to any photograph you want. So if you don't see uh, save new look down here, just make sure that you have looks 
clicked here and now you access save new look call your look a name and a look is just a luminar's terminology for a preset so i might call this generic preset click save and that look is now added to my presets they're all displayed alphabetically uh, i've currently got far too many of them to be honest uh, just as a, an example i've created this preset to the left called forest warm light if i click that now this looked absolutely fantastic on a particular photo uh, of a forest with sun flaring through the trees. It was absolutely beautiful, but it looks absolutely ghastly on this, um, even in a lower amount. Why would you have a sun flare here? It makes no sense. But if we click our generic preset on the right that we just created, Bamo, you can see that that's a much nicer photo that's more authentic to the original image, but has improved it. So now let's see if we can apply it to the other photographs and improve them. I'm just gonna do it on say one photograph to start with, just so we can see whether it works or not. So let's select this photograph here of my friend's son doing his climbing, and let's just click our generic preset here and see if we get an improvement. Now, hopefully it's not gonna do anything weird to the colors. It's not gonna do anything crazy like put a sun flare in, but we should see an improvement. So I'm gonna click that and let's have a look. And there you go, it's, it's made an edit. So let's look at our before and our after. Now it's putting in a slight color cast and that's coming from that lookup table that we applied. So if I come here, that long beach, if I turn that off, that's just getting rid of that color cast. And to be honest, like I say, when you're creating something generic, you don't really wanna be introducing things like color casts. So if I make that change and just turn this off or just reduce that all the way to zero, I can then come to the generic preset and right click and I can just go update with current settings. Now when we apply that preset, it's not going to have that lookup table applied and I think that's a much better option. So let's look at our before and our after and we've just increased the contrast uh, improved the exposure and things look much much better so now we've created our generic preset how do we apply it to all of the photos in a folder or a batch of photos well it's super easy all you do is over on this left hand side where we've got our film strip here uh, we've got our photo selected that has the generic preset already applied we can just press Control and a and that's a shortcut for selecting all and from here what, what you do is select a photo that hasn't been edited yet and just right click on it and you go to adjustments and sync adjustments you could use the shortcut Control shift and s if you like but that's just another way of doing it luminar will then go through and apply that to every single photo and there are quite a lot of adjustments built into that edit that we've made so it can take a little while to go through and update all of the photos with those changes but it's well worth it so let's come down and we'll find a photo that we've not looked at yet uh, let's just select randomly one of these ones at the end here. Currently we can't do anything to it because Luminar is loading it up and making those changes. As soon as that changes from being greyed out, you know that it's made those changes to the photo and we can click our eye tool here so we can see our before and pretty flat, dull image and after and that's got a heap more pop to it. So that's worked great for that photo and you can see that the rest of the images as well have all been improved. So if you choose any photo with that generic preset, it will have made an enhancement to it. Okay, so I'm really excited by this bit. This is where we get to test our preset. Did it actually work what we've just done? So fingers crossed. I'm pretty confident, but we're gonna take a look at how it will affect a portrait, um, a flower, a couple of landscapes, and also a couple of architectural shots. And just check that this generic preset does actually enhance all of these photographs and not actually make them any worse or introduce any weird color casts, things like that. And if it looks good, then you know that you're onto a real winner in terms of time saving, because you can apply this preset to any photograph you bring in and it should improve it. And if for whatever reason it doesn't, you can then go back into those adjustments and just make slight changes. But I'm pretty sure that this will give you a really great base to work from. So let's check it out. Okay, so these are our photos imported into the library. And let's just double click on the first one here. This is a portrait of my son and my daughter together. And let us just apply this new preset. And as you can see, I think we've got 
richer colors. Colors are still authentic to how they should be. And overall, this looks great. So this was our before and this is our after. If we zoom in, we can take a look at how those sharpening changes we made work as well. So that looks nice and sharp, really pin sharp. If we look at our before and our after, everything just really pops, um, looks really, really good. So I'm really happy with that. Let's zoom back out and now what we'll do is actually just select all of these photos here on the left hand side and we're just going to click the top one, right click and go to adjustments, sync adjustments, click that and now Luminar will apply our generic preset to each and every one of these photos and you can see it going through and making those changes in real time. Let's just take a look at the flower and I'm just going to click the looks panel just to get rid of that so we can see more uh, screen real estate of the photo itself and do the eyedropper before and after and everything just starts to pop and if you feel like it's just a little bit too much like it might be adding just a little bit too much of that structure tool to the water droplets uh, what you can do is just reduce the opacity of the overall effect so here we've got an amount slider and we can just bring that back to where we feel it's a more subtle look so there you go Okay, now here's our effect on our waterfall image. And if we look at our before and after, everything was very flat before. Uh, but if you feel like things are just getting a little too overexposed, this is where you can just make minor adjustments. Uh, so it's basically the highlights in the waterfall itself that are just getting out of hand. The, so we could reset this contrast and also drop the highlights right down. And just like that, we've been able to recover the detail in the water there. So although we're striving for perfection in terms of a generic preset, you'll find that it doesn't work for every single image. It will work for most of them. So in this case, it didn't work, but what we can do is just make a minor adjustment and now we've got something that was better than what it was. So now let's have a look at our seascape. This was our before and this is our after with our preset applied. If we click our before and after line, you can see that we got quite flat washed out image straight from the camera and we're increasing the saturation, the contrast, bringing detail into the shadows, all of that good stuff just to give you a much better starting point with your photos or a place where you say I'm happy with that from that to that uh, with no work from myself other than saying apply this preset that's really great. Now let's have a look at this shack. Now this is just loading up. Sometimes it does take a little while if you've applied a lot of changes, uh, which we have done with this preset, but really it's Luminar doing all the hard work for you. So to go from this to this, and it's not actually taking you any trouble whatsoever, um, I think it's worth the wait. Well guys, I really appreciate you watching this video and I hope that you've got a lot of value out of it. Honestly, if you follow these steps through and create your own generic preset that you can apply to any genre of photography, any set of photos, you are gonna save yourself a serious amount of time. You can dive back in if you wanna take things further or build upon your preset, but what a good place to start from. Uh, an improved photograph from the original and then you can go from there if you want or leave it exactly as it is but either way time saver thank you so much for watching i hope you guys are staying safe out there uh, means a lot to me that you're here watching my video so yeah please subscribe if you haven't already hit the thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one thanks so much